Welcome to this JAMDA author video presentation. I'm Jan Bluestein, and I'm on the faculty at New York University, at the medical school and at the Wagner Graduate School. I'm the senior author of an article that appears in the April 2018 issue of JAMDA, the Journal of Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine. The article is entitled, Hearing Loss, Why Does It Matter for Nursing Homes? Nursing home residents are physically and emotionally vulnerable and frail, both because of age and due to a number of highly prevalent conditions, such as cognitive impairment, social isolation, and depression. But one of these vulnerabilities receives relatively little attention, and that's hearing loss. Hearing loss is important because it disrupts communication, and communication is at the foundation of social engagement. People with hearing loss have less opportunity to enjoy the company of others, but they also have a reduced chance to express both medical and social needs, as well as diminished capacity to participate in the community and less ability to participate in care decisions. It's worth noting that among nursing home residents, the toll of hearing loss is compounded by a number of things, and one of those factors is ambient sounds in the environment. In noise, it's hard to understand speech, and nursing homes are very noisy, particularly in areas where socializing might occur. So think of blaring televisions and clattering in the dining halls. Another factor is limited cognitive resources. Understanding speech requires cognitive resources, and in hearing loss, the speech signal is degraded, and people with cognitive impairments struggle to de decode speech. Lack of motivation and will is another factor, as attending to speech in the context of hearing loss requires effort. Depression and chronic pain may lead patients with hearing loss to just check out. Interestingly, there's no national data on the prevalence of hearing loss in nursing homes. There are small-scale studies, and most of those are from single homes, and those suggest that hearing loss is both highly prevalent and remarkably under-recognized by staff. But to date, there have been no national studies of the rate of hearing impairment. That's what my co-authors and I studied using the minimum data set. We identified long-stay residents, and those had been in a facility for at least a year in 2015. For each resident, we extracted the MDS measure of adequacy of hearing. That measure is recorded by the MDS assessor based on patient self-report, observation of the patient, discussions with staff, and review of the medical record. And the highest rating is adequate, meaning that the resident has no difficulty in normal conversation, social interaction, or listening to television. We tabulated ratings of adequacy of hearing by age strata and compared those with previously published age-specific rates in the National Health and Nutrition Survey, or NHANES. And we looked at whether the rates reported in the MDS for nursing home residents were comparable to those for older people living in the community in NHANES. We expected that the nursing home rates would be comparable or worse than community rates, since age-equivalent nursing home residents face the same, if not greater, risks for hearing loss than those living in the community. But on the other hand, we knew from prior studies that nursing home staff often miss hearing loss. Here's what we found, and this graphic shows the percent in two age groups without hearing difficulty from three different sources. The red bars show our rates from the MDS. So, for example, on the left, the 68% means that, in other words, two-thirds of residents age 70 and over were reported to have no difficulty with hearing and social activities, according to MDS reports. In contrast, the NNs rate for the same age people found that only 50% self-reported their hearing is good or excellent. And when the NHANES project measured the hearing via audiogram, they found that only about a third were without clinically significant hearing loss in that age group of 70 plus. Similar findings were noted for people 80 and older, as indicated in the right graphic. In other words, the MDS reports attributed no trouble with hearing in far more cases than is plausible, based on tests of older adults in the community. We conclude that the MDS reports of no trouble hearing are implausibly high and that residents can't be hearing it that well as is reported. This over-attribution of good hearing is consistent with what's been previously documented in many small studies from single homes. Resident hearing loss is often under-recognized or unrecognized. The MDS data, therefore, when compared with community data, strongly suggests a pervasive, that is, national problem with hearing loss under recognition in nursing homes. And this is important for several reasons. First, it can lead to miscommunication, but also it can lead to errone the erroneous assumption if the patient is not or the resident is not communicating that that resident has dementia. Finally, and critically, it can lead to the unnecessary isolation of a resident with unrecognized hearing impairment from social contact. How can nursing homes do better? Currently, many nursing home staff have little knowledge about hearing loss. So, for example, they may not be able to tell whether a person who often asks for repetition has hearing loss or cognitive impairment or both. So education's needed. 
Staff need to understand that hearing loss has devastating consequences in terms of social isolation and reduced quality of life. And staff should be taught strategies to better communicate with people with hearing loss. The MDS RIA outlines many steps that can be taken to improve hearing. Importantly, these don't involve introducing or using hearing aids. Rather, they include simple steps such as facing the patient when talking, mm. speaking slowly and distinctly, and using low-cost assistive devices such as pocket talkers. Thank you for listening. Our study appears in the April 2018 issue of JAMDA, the Journal of Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine. That's available at JAMDA.com.